As a young girl, I couldn't help but fall in love with horses, and particularly the working horse. Percherons, Shires, Belgians, Halfingers, and Clydesdales were just a few of the breeds known as draft horses. In 1910, 25 million horses were in service. But widespread use of engine-powered machines and mechanization caused the horse population to quickly decline. In 2007, only 2.5 million horses were reported. But since that time, a new trend is emerging. This is Houston and Hummer. I don't know, can you see Hummer back there? So Houston is the younger of the two horses. He is just five and I got him as a yearling and did all of his training myself. And uh, he, the breed of both these horses is halflingers. So it's a small draft breed. And uh, Hummer is, we don't know exactly how old he is. He's probably 16 or 17. And uh, he's a little smaller, but he's more mature, and uh, he, he can easily compensate for his size with his uh, good work ethic. When I was in college, I actually drove, as my job, I drove carriages in Philadelphia. And I really enjoyed that, and I loved the draft horses. Just their temperament and all that. But uh, it's interesting, because... I did that for four years, but I didn't actually know how to drive. Those horses knew, they knew the ropes, and they didn't really, I think you could have been anybody sitting up in that seat. And you could have thought that you knew how to drive. And it wasn't until I came to Oregon and started my process with the draft horses up here that I really learned how much I didn't know. I also found myself a mentor, which helped a lot. And so Dwayne Van Dyke has mentored me and taught me so much and that's how I got involved in the Draft Horse Breeders Association and the plowing competitions and all these just huge network of great old farmer horsemen. How I got started is when I was a little kid, uh, dad raised, I'm the oldest of seven kids and dad horse logged. He was crippled. He, he horse logged and made 100% of our living by horse logging. And as I was growing up, I've been working with the big horses ever since I was just a little kid. And uh, I started uh, helping Dad do his shoeing and, and everything. And, I mean, for the most part, that's all that was in my life. I mean, I loved the big horses. In uh, 1968, uh, we got kind of involved in going to the state fair for horse pull and it was the very first horse pull we ever went to and a horse pull is competition to see who pulls the biggest load and uh, so in 69 is when I started pulling a team myself and I've been doing it pretty steady since. Also I get into plowing matches and so forth and it's it's very difficult to take horses that you go to plowing matches with and are real good pulling horses because when you pull horses they get a desire to really storm on it and plowing horses you want a little steadier. I think that's the thing with working horses. You have to really want to work horses. I don't, I think if your goal is just to like get something done, you really should just use a tractor. <laughs> you have to really want to do it this way and be willing to not get it done if whatever something happens <laughs> it's not it's not necessarily you know but Dwayne always says <clears throat> that you have to be willing 
you're going to go out and train or work your horses, you can't do it on a, on a tight time schedule. You can't suddenly be like, i got to get this done in half an hour and expect that's just when the horse is going to pick up on that vibe and be like, ha ha, no, we're not getting anything done today. The irony about the... Uh, the plowing competitions is I don't actually plow on this property um, because we're practicing no-till farming so the harrow is, is the answer to that so like when we move the cows or the chickens out of a certain area then I'll go through with the harrow and the horses and work the manure into the ground that way it keeps them and me um, sort of mentally and physically fit for doing other work because the plowing is actually pretty challenging um, because when you're plowing you're not actually holding the lines you have the lines behind you and your your hands are on the plow so you're definitely you can take one hand off the plow and use the lines but you have to have a pretty good working relationship with your team to successfully plow you're starting to see I believe a few more teams on farms that people are trying to uh, you know use for for some of their work to kind of cut out the use of expensive fuel and uh, I do know a lot of big farmers and ranchers they feed cattle with horses at not in in the winter time because uh, you don't have to worry about pushing a button and start and they usually start Thanks to people like Jerry Lee and Clara Carver, who have chosen to live out their passion for the draft horse and share their experience, we can all enjoy part of history and the roots of a new revival.